Okay, we're gonna, I, sorry, I uh, changed my clothes. It's been a while since I've done this. I'm just gonna get these videos done. Um, we are with Langdon Park School looking at paper one. Um, oh, here, let me just show you that. Yeah, we've done carving. We've, we've reminded ourselves what we're doing for every question. We've carved up the source. We did question two. I'm not going to bother with question one. Obviously, it's very easy. But now we're going to come to the tricky, one of the trickiest questions, which is really um, uh, unusual and counterintuitive until you start getting practice with it. It's question three, and it's analysis of structure. So let's take a look at question three. Firstly, let's look at the wording of the question. Okay, question three, you need to think of the whole source. So this is why this one, you've got to actually read the whole source. You've got to read it quickly. Um, it's worth the same marks as question two. So you've got to read it in about seven minutes, which is challenging, actually, just completing a, uh, a reading in seven minutes. And what you've got to do is, and it'll always be the same question, how does a writer structure the text to interest you as a reader? Um, and the bullet points help because it asks about the beginning, change, uh, change of focus, and any other structural features that interest you. So in question, if you if you already noticed, in question two, question two, we've already talked about the opening to some extent. Um, and in question four, we realized we get some hints about where the shift could happen, the change. So essentially, if you if we go back to our source, what we'll notice is this is pretty much the opening, but actually if we extend all the way to here, we can make a prediction that there's a shift or a change here. And then the ending is somewhere obviously towards the end of the piece, towards here, I'm making a guess. That's basic structure, opening, middle, ending. Okay, really simple, simple thing. And what I'd want is one paragraph on the opening kind of, and then the second paragraph on the shift in the ending. A little bit more sophisticated is going to be something like if you can find a pattern or if you can find a moment, or in this piece in particular, there's a shift in time. That's a structural feature that the writer's doing on purpose to interest you, to construct their text. What question three really isn't about at all is language analysis, and that's the trap. Because the most of what we do in English, particularly with literature, is language analysis. It can get kind of tricky. It can get kind of tricky because you think all analysis is language analysis. Well, no. You have to shift mode for question three and think about structure. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves what's going on. In, I'm going to show you some tricks because I'm, I'm going to try not to read the source too much. So in the opening... Um, we find out, that, uh, remember in question two, we found out, sorry, I'm getting some phone calls. I'm going to just put my phone on silent. Um, we found out that um, she's, this woman, um, her name's Alice, I think, uh, is, uh, is in the mountains, and it's kind of treacherous and dangerous. If you read the whole source, um, and remember this, oh, this in the top here is a little bit of a clue. What you really start to see is that um, she really wants to prove herself. So let me just find that part. Um, okay, so this is the this is the setting. It's negative and positive, but really quite. Um, it's paints. It's boring work. The digging and scraping. And so they've turned up little of significance to justify their efforts. They've come across a few fragments, a pots and bowl, a couple of late... Okay, so they've, they've, they've found very little. They found nothing. They found nothing. So now here, this moment is a big shift for uh, the piece because it tells us question four onwards. So the, the main thing that's happening is she's tempted to go down... Um, her muscles and shoulders are tense, and she hopefully her luck's about to change. Her luck has been negative, negative luck. Why? Why? Um, because she's really wanted to prove herself, and all of a sudden, 
all of a sudden there's this hidden object and it's it's large and it's mysterious it's been placed there by a giant hand that really sticks out she can't figure out what it is but she knows it's important she knows she should go get someone. Why? Because she's not experienced. We learned that in the box at the top. She's kind of on a work experience. And um, she should go get people who actually know what they're doing. But she really wants to prove herself. She really deeply wants to show that she's worth something. And crucially, crucially now, we get this flash forward. In days and weeks to come, Alice will look back at this moment and she'll remember the quality of light, the dust in her mouth. This, this moment is significant. And by the way, if you read question two, that's what we're going to look at, is evaluating this. And what the writer does is they don't, they don't reveal. Okay? They kind of hide that. So here in the opening, we get the sense of a kind of aggressive atmosphere that um, it's, she's quite bored and nothing's happened. And she's, the shift is starting where she's ready to give up. She's ready to give up. And in the ending, wait, she not only found, so she's ready to give up and she finds something. And then crucially in the end, she may discover something in the future. So let's, so this is obviously the book that I've uh, written for my Langdon Park students. And I'm just going to try and take you to it and just remind you of like how we do it. Okay, so again, if you're thinking of structure, you can talk about shift of place, shift of time, shift of perspective. Really, basically for this question, I want you to think about the opening, the shift, and the ending. So by evidence, we want quotes. So something like the opening, we want to get some sense that... Um, it's painstaking, painstaking, monotonous work. Okay? And what we know is it's difficult, boring. Uh, the setting, that's not from this quote, but we know from question two, the setting is uh, brutal. The shift comes when she's about to give up. So she's tempted, tempted to give up. Discovers giant hand object. Right? That's the big moment. So uh, from this, I infer this is going to be important. Treasure, maybe. Magic. It's something that's going to start the story, basically. Start the story. And then finally, it's this shift to in the days and weeks to come. So the flash forward. Okay, That's really what's going to get you the marks to no excuse me, to notice that. There is actually a flash forward, and this indicates this moment has significance, but the writer keeps tension by not revealing. So, of course, what you're thinking is, how did you do this so quickly? How is that possible? Well, it's not going to happen automatically. You have to read a lot of text. You have to practice. You have to be familiar with prose. You, you, you need to be able to be reading short stories, novels, and you have to understand and be attuned to when there's a shift. On the other hand, if you, did, if you look at the video again on carving up the source, there are tricks and cheats to that as well. Remember that question two involves certain number parts. There is always the shift and look, it came true. That shift is important. The only thing here is the ending is actually more. So this opening, very little happens. It's here and here where the main, main changes. I'm going to just draw that line because we might need it for question four. 
Okay, so let me go back. These are my notes previously. This is what I did years ago. Let's see what let's see what I came up with. Okay, so let me just zoom in right here. Um, drink water above her. The sky is an endless blue. Um, I don't think that's the best quote now. I would also add monotonous, boring. Earlier she'd know something there. That's that I would stand by, and then that I would stand by. So the shift is when this object is hinted at, and this is the future to suggest this moment is significant, important. Again, I took, I obviously am very familiar with the source, but um, I'm stealing from uh, question four as well. So you're not analyzing language. So this is a more of a traditional paragraph where point answers the question. You still are using quote, you're using evidence. You're inferring, so that's tricky, inference. What is inference? Inference is that answering the question, so what? So what about this? Why has the writer done this? What, for what purpose have they, or for, and by doing this, what are they implying? And then finally, what is the effect on the reader? So let me, let me just read through my exemplar with you really carefully. Um, for those of you who are my students, you might just do this yourself, or now basically try to write it yourself. The writer opens the extract by focusing on the character of Alice in the mountains of France. I don't think that's good enough, but I think that's my point. The writer emphasizes the difficulty of the terrain by contrasting her need for great gulps of water and the endless blue sky. So the contrast, I guess I was going for there, was the positive and the negative. Immediately, the writer mixes details of hardships with details of beauty. The reader is immediately struck by the image of the beautiful setting and the hard work. Okay, so effect of the reader inference is could be improved i think but it's there let's keep going over the course so the way i'd write it now is probably i would combine these and to be honest if i was being most relevant i might actually leave out number one it's not that helpful over the course of the passage the writer focuses on the hardship of the dig and then suggests a mystery through detail i'd stand by that Earlier, Alice noticed something hidden behind a rock, but so special that it seemed like it had been placed there by a giant hand. Um, that's not just using a quote. I'm integrating the quotation into the language to try to in explain already. The writer's intriguing details suggest something mysterious and important for the character. That is some inference, but again, I think I could improve that. This is reinforced by the character's own reflections towards the end of the passage in the days and weeks to come. She'd remember this moment when she chose to go and not stay. By shifting time frames, that's the real structural device. That's the real structural device. The writer makes the reader sense the importance of the moment and the future that will come. We can't help but wonder why the choice to go will prove so important. As a reader, I'm desperate to find out what Alice discovers or the future danger she will meet. Okay, I've done some effect, okay? But this was an answer I wrote quite a while ago. I think what I would do if I were to improve is actually give a little bit more inference and really deeply answer this question. Why has the writer structured the, 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 the passage in this way? So... The, the, the key with question three is you got to read quickly. You got to read a lot because if you don't read a lot, um, uh, of course, English is nonsensical. You're going to find everything impossible. Once you've read closely, use the questions to kind of indicate where a shift might be. Then you've got to make very quick identification of opening, middle, end. Better than opening, middle, end is finding the most relevant structural moments. So for us, that would be the finding of the object and the flash forward. So even, even then, if you can just focus on those, that's even better. Find relevant quotes. Discuss why the writers structured it this way. Infer from your quotation and really explore that inference and the effect of the structure on the reader. 
And that's how you do question three. Now, the most important thing to remember is that it's only worth eight marks. And the big one is still to come, question four. So you don't want to waste too much time. Again, you're going to need to practice structure. You're going to need to practice writing it if you hope to have any success. Okay? I hope that's helpful for you. I would love feedback. Come see me in E1. What would you like to see in a video to help you with paper one? Thanks.